Hey guys, Nathan Brandon Masters. I was going to do this video a few days ago, but some things got in the way. But your boy is back in praise of shadows, just like I said he was going to be. Now, it took him a minute. See, I thought like, man, maybe I was wrong. Maybe this dude was just completely ran off the internet. I'm like, man, he should have, you know, he should have, he should come back and do his thing. But he came back with a banger. Well, I, I don't know if it was a banger or not, but I do know it was a six hour video. So what he was talking about in that last video, he was like, I, I didn't make any money. Oh, he coming back. He planning on making some money. He did a video on John Waters, which is actually pretty interesting. If you know about the filmmaker, John Waters is probably a video that everybody will watch because that's something that a lot of people are familiar with. I am going to actually give it a watch. It's probably going to be one of those videos that I put on, uh, you know, to go to sleep, to listen to. And uh, as I go to sleep and maybe watch it again when I wake up, but I'm going to check it out. But that's not the video everybody is talking about. What people are talking about is the video on his new second channel in Praise of Shadows Dark Sides. Check this dude out. He got a little vlogging channel happening. That's where you do it, bro. That's how you do it. Told you he's coming back with the apology arc. Is it a good one? No, but he is doing his thing. And like I told you before, it's like he just had a bad take. Now, the one thing I will say, he gave no dams about defamation in that video. And so far, nobody said anything about coming after him legally. And it's probably smart of him to have actually gone after these bigger channels because technically they have bigger reach than his channel. Wendigoon is publicly friends with Donut Operator. Wendigoon is publicly connected to the internet historian. He is friends with Mudahar. He has collaborated with Nick Crowley, Plagued Moth, Turkey Tom, Mr. Ballin. And plus, even people who are bread tubers and lefties were kind of like, bruh, this is a bad take. So yeah, we, we, we see what's going on there. So he, he lucked out on that. This channel already has a thousand subs, so all he has to do is get his watch time up, and I think he'll be able to do that, and then he'll be able to monetize on this channel, which is good. He'll have two channels he can monetize on, and maybe he can get a little of that sweet, sweet ad revenue. Uh, maybe if he gets this uh, all up and cracking before Christmas, he can, you know, get that money on both channels. Now, on to the new video. It's not as bad as a ukulele apology. Hold on a second now, because Colleen Bellinger's apology was bad, but I ain't gonna lie, she dropped a bop. That toxic gossip train, now that, that did slap a little bit. I ain't even on trip. But our guy in Praise of Shadows, or as we call him here, Shadow Praise, he's got some stuff to say. Hi. Uh, I don't really know how to start this, so I guess I'm just gonna start talking, I guess. Uh, it's been a while. Hope you've been okay. See, nice intro. I like what he did there. He came in, you know, nice little, you know, he, he doesn't want to jump into it just yet. You know, he wants to kind of meet you where you're at. Boy, know he said some wild stuff, but he, he ain't going to jump right into it. He's got to kind of, you know, lull you into it a little bit. I didn't want to really use a script for this video because anything that I say will be talked negatively about. Not necessarily true. People really just want you to come in on your mistake take the L, say, you know what, I messed up. And maybe you could tell why you messed up. Maybe you could tell how you're not going to do it again and why, you know, what steps you're taking to improve. I mean, hell, even EDP did a somewhat decent apology video. I mean, we just didn't believe him because, you know, he's EDP and he can't seem to stop himself from talking to minors. Recently, one of the best uh, apology videos was, was Asmund Gold, who just came in broke it down, said, this is, you know, what I was feeling. This is uh, what I, you know, what I plan to do to get better. And we actually see him uh, starting on that course, started with cleaning up his, his house and uh, getting mentally better. And hopefully that will help him go down a, a different course. And I know personally getting that room clean, well, that's a really good start to getting your mental right. There's still people who are going to be negative on that video. Sure, there's always going to be people who say, we won't forgive you. But I feel like the majority of people in this situation aren't going to feel that way. I, I mean, I think a lot of people 
are just here for the drama. And I think that if he keeps dropping, you know, if he drops some solid bangers, people will easily forget, you know, again, like I say, the dude didn't do anything particularly that he couldn't, you know, that he can't come back from. Okay. Yeah. I said that in the last video and the, the John Waters video has like 40 some K views on it. I ain't got 40 K views on nothing, at least not on this channel. And many of you don't. So he doing better than a lot of us. And if I'd used a written response, I felt like people would be like, oh, he's just, uh, you know, doing this for PR. You know, I didn't want it to feel like a statement that a politician would put out. I just wanted to be me talking to you human to human. So apologies if this is a bit rambly. Uh, this is a little different for me. So what I would say is like after this opener right here, we should have went right into the meat. Um, I was just going to talk. And I guess I'll start with uh, kind of a big piece of criticism was that like I just sort of disappeared. And I did that kind of for two reasons. One was that, of course, like anything that I said wasn't going to help the situation that was happening. And so I just left. And I didn't want to really talk about it. And this is the last time I'm ever going to publicly talk about the situation again. I just also felt that people would be kind of like annoyed if I like uh, tried to like come back and start making things again uh, and just pretend like nothing ever happened. I didn't want to do that. I'm not annoyed by that. What I'm kind of iffy about is you creating a second channel for this video, which should have been a first, this should have been a main channel video because your other video was a main channel video. But by you putting it on this channel, you already got your 1000 subscribers. And once you get your 4,000 watch hours, you can monetize this channel. And I think you're going to get your 4,000 watch hours pretty quickly. And what I'm saying, guys, is this dude is smarter than you think he is. And if he's not, he doing a lot of things that make way too much financial sense accidentally. Understand, just because somebody's a bread tuber, that don't mean they dumb. Even if they claim to be a socialist or whatever. I mean, Hassan Piker claims to be a socialist, but the man lives in a $3 million home. I mean, I'm an avowed capitalist. And I ain't never had no money nowhere near that. So one of or both of us are doing something wrong. But either way, don't think just because these bread tubers, you know, they they had that little, you know, they they talk that talk. Don't think they, you know, they don't keep their eye on that money because they do. And you remember in that first video, he was already telling you he he ain't making what he think he need to be making. So he, you know, he he making some money moves. In my opinion, again, this could all be luck, but I, I just don't think so. Do come back with a six hour video and then drop the apology on another channel. He's gonna have two monetized channels, long form video. Bro, come on, dude. And I might be wrong about this, but on that second channel, I'm willing to bet you he starts doing a lot more uploading on that channel and then pushing his long form over to his prime or to his uh, first channel and he'll have that money coming in on both ends. That's what I believe he's gonna do. One channel is gonna be vlogging, the other channel is gonna be for his uh, for his long form doc style stuff. That's the move. Now, if you start seeing him pumping out content, especially if he starts doing slop content, like drama content stuff, he starts doing slop on that second channel, the money moves, guaranteed money moves. Also like, I don't really know how to make this video because the history of like, you know, YouTube apology videos is like a format that is consistently made fun of for good reason. Okay. So I like the self-awareness going on right here. That's, that's always a good, good start to be self-aware, but it's a little bit too much of this for me right now. I would like for him to get directly into the meat at that point. He should be getting into the apology if he is going to apologize. And I'm not anti-apology at all. I'm not. Uh, it's just that, like, usually, like, someone who works on the internet will mess up and then, like, immediately will put out, like, an apology video and be like, you know, I'm not that person anymore. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I've changed, guys. And it's complete bullshit. You know, everybody knows that it's bullshit because you're like, what do you mean you're not that person anymore? You just said that thing two days ago. Of course you're that person. Honestly, this is not a bad take. This This is a good take right here. And so, like, <laughs> with my situation, I said I was going to be gone for a month. Um, clearly, I needed a break. Uh, I wasn't doing very well. And uh, I ended up 
taking more than that because I wasn't ready to come back. Uh, and I really wanted to come back with something that showed what I could do. That showed that I would be willing to listen to criticism of me because I always am. I always want to do better. And so I hope that the John Waters video has kind of shown that. All right. Money move again. So he's telling you, hey, look what I did. Look at the video I did because that will show to you uh, how I'm moving forward in, my, in what I'm doing next. And this will show you how I've grown. To see how he's grown, you have to watch his new video. Bro. And even with this apology, you can see that he's not really taking it that seriously, which I, I would... I would hate for him to come back with like a super serious apology. It ain't that deep, but you know, like I said, I didn't believe it was that deep in the first video because there were some things he was doing and I'm like, you can't be serious with what you're doing right now. So, you know, this is a money move right here. He's saying, Hey, let me throw you back to my main video. And in case you guys are wondering why I like, why I'm breaking it down like this. I used to watch all the, YouTube videos, YouTube marketing videos and stuff. So I know how some of this stuff, you know, how some of these moves work. So he's throwing you back to the video on his main channel. He's saying, go watch that video and see what I did with that. And you can see how I'm changing. And I'm going to say, I think the John Waters video, that was a smart move. That was a smart video to make. He's a beloved indie filmmaker, even people like me. Uh, you know, we, we respect John Waters for that indie spirit. So good good video you know good subject matter to to come back with i don't know if i want to do six hours of john waters but like i said i give it a chance good video to fall asleep to you know if you fall asleep to a video like this those ads still play bro you know what i'm saying uh this was kind of a wake-up call moment for me so you know that's kind of where i'm at at the moment and i guess one of the main things i wanted to talk about here is that like you know when you do anything in a very public way that uh it isn't received particularly well people are going to do two things which is like ascribe a motive for why you did that thing and also wildly speculate about yourself uh to put attributes onto you you know um that often aren't true and you know i probably I definitely am guilty of doing that in the past, even in the bad conservative horror movie video. So I kind of wanted to talk more about me here than other people, uh, which is something I don't really do all that much. Um, one of the biggest things that has kind of always surprised me my whole like career on YouTube is people thinking that I hate Christians. And I don't at all. I don't hate religious people at all. I myself am a Methodist. And I have gone to annual conference with the Methodists for the past, I think, four years because I have an invested interest in how the church is dealing with LGBT members, uh, which is an ongoing thing with the Methodists. I don't hate Christians at all. I can be very critical of Christians. I don't like evangelicals. I don't like proselytizers. Now, this was unexpected, and I'm not saying I don't believe him. I'm just, I'm just acknowledging how he's going at this, where he's literally reaching out to uh, the Christian community and the LGBT community at the same time. And that's, that's an interesting way of doing it. And he's saying, hey, you know, to like-minded people, you know, this is what my beliefs are. So he's telling you more about himself. And some of this, what he's going to say next, I actually agree with. And usually if I'm being critical of religious people, it's because they're using the religion as part of their online brand. And if you're like mixing money or your business with your religion, that is almost certainly like a perversion of whatever your religion is teaching. And, you know, I don't want to get into anything. I'm really, I'm not trying to like double down here with what I'm saying in this. I'm not trying to like critique people. I'm just trying to talk about where I come from with things. Now, I agree with them here, but only to a certain point. There are people on YouTube, we've seen it over and over and over, who will try to use religion to endear, uh, to endear themselves to you. And then later on, of course, they're going to try to try to get money from you as part of their marketing, as part of their brand. I'm religious and therefore you can trust me. And uh, what I say is true and I'm coming from a good place 
And you know, if I'm if I'm offering you something, you may want to buy it from me instead of other people because I'm religious and I'm a good person. That we see that all the time. I mean, we saw that with Ruby Frank. Wasn't that her whole thing of how religious she was? She was a strict mom that was going to raise her children right, and she had these weird punishments for many times very small infractions, such as you know, if you're a young child and you forget your lunch, that's you know, well, you're just going to starve that day. And that was one of the more famous clips. And there are people who kind of see. Mm. <laughs> I don't know, this is something iffy about you. And then of course we know what we find out later on. She's abusing her kids, which people had already called out. And she's just out there wilding, like the dad just up and left. You don't even remember what his name was, but you get the point. It was bad. And of course she finally went to jail. But in my opinion, religion was definitely part of her marketing, part of her brand, part of, you know, this is who I am. And uh, this is how I'm raising my children. You know, I'm going to be an example for people. And there are some people who she did endear herself to. So, yeah, that that's a thing that happens. Because I'm realizing, like, a big issue with my writing is saying something and just assuming that people understand what I mean. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this part here because he's basically saying he assumes that people have watched his other work. And when he says certain things, he assumes that people will take it back to things that he's talked about before. But he now realizes that he has a lot of times people that don't uh, make those connections. And now he's going to talk about, or at least I'm going to cut to him talking about the racism in Appalachia uh, comments. And another big one <laughs> that that came with is when I talked about race in Appalachia. Um, a lot of people weirdly thought that I was Northern or not from Appalachia. People were saying like, you know, Appalachia sends its regards and shit like that. But like, you know, I've, I've lived in the Appalachian mountains ba basically my whole life. And I made like a two plus hour video explaining my complicated views of the American South uh, with the Joanne Denton video, where I talked about how like I love North Carolina and how I've lived here my entire life and, and how much of an impact this place has had on me. But also to pretend that the South doesn't have a major problem with racism is like kind of insane. You know, and I talk in that video about like, the heavy clan presence in areas of North Carolina. I talk about casual social racism and stuff like that. So like, I felt like I was okay to make a one sentence, like throwaway thing because I'd already explained my position on that in the past. Um, I don't hate Appalachians. I live here <laughs> and I have chosen to live here for a long time now. And he does talk a little bit more about things that were being said and done uh, online and as how they related to him. And uh, you can go and watch his whole uh, video to get more on that if you're looking for that. I'm just going to kind of jump to the important stuff that people are questioning. It was a bad day for me. It was a bad period for me. You know, I was kind of made into this like cartoon character where I am impossible to get along with people who are on the right, which is actually not true at all. I know this sounds like made up, but the guy that I hired to work on the set with me for the John Waters video was wearing a Make America Great Again hat like the entire time we were working. Uh, but he does a good job. And that's just the realities of living in the American South. Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. That sounds kind of like I got friends that are black. You know, it's got one of those, it's got that kind of vibe to it. And Believe me, I'm in no way, shape, or form a MAGA guy, but as an artist online, I have seen the you're either with us or against us mentality, and it's on the far left, and it's on the far right. There's a lot of people who have that mentality, and in that particular video, and I, I know uh, he says this, but in that particular video, he does definitely come off as one of those far left bread tuber types who have the idea that anything that is Western or capitalist or American, uh, all those things, or, you know, just anything that's traditional, all those things are kind of bad. And it's annoying. Now, I know why it might be annoying to other people. To me, it's mainly annoying because it's stupid. And I hate stupid stuff because it ignores the reality of life. And it does so to turn people into caricatures of what they really are. There's a lot of liberals who have conservative beliefs, and a lot of conservatives who have liberal beliefs. Chicago is known as a democratic town, and it's not hard to find someone that goes to church, believes in God, and also owns a gun, 
things that are generally considered conservative. It's something you can find real easily here in Chicago. So in the online political discourse, there's this idea that everybody fits in this little box. And on the left, particularly the far left, there's a tendency to call people fascists for doing very normal things, such as owning guns or being in support of legitimate police actions. I catch myself doing some of these same things, putting uh, far left people in a box because a lot of them tend to criticize legitimate police action, particularly when dealing with pedos. And there seems to be some kind of uh, weird antagonism against police cracking down on these people. And it's like, what's that about? And I know for a fact that's not everybody on the left, but it does seem the further left you go, the more that attitude kind of rears this ugly head. Kind of iffy. Or if this were two years ago, I'd say, sus. Even when he talks about people who use slurs, that doesn't necessarily make you a fascist. Doesn't even necessarily make you a racist makes you kind of an asshole, but I was young too, and I'd be lying if I said I've never used slurs. When you're young, there's something about saying that thing that you're not supposed to say. But even then, people knew there were lines not to cross. And we didn't have Discord and chat groups where, you know, once people get mad at each other, they leak the private chat. And then 10 years later, people find the conversation and say, you said this 10 years ago. We're going to punish you now. So his video just kind of had that cancel culture vibe that people were just kind of tired of at that time. You know, just like people are kind of tired of the, the woke movie video where everything that comes out is just woke. I mean, that's, that's just like Anita Sarkeesian with the everything is racist, everything is sexist. You got to point it all out. This is the same thing with the woke stuff. Everything is woke and you got to point it all out. No, you don't. Just let people enjoy something. But I do think the biggest mistake or the best idea, depending on what side of the conversation you land, was centering the last part of that video around Wendigoon. I kind of think it was done intentionally. It makes sense business-wise. He found the nicest guy in that audience, in that whole group of people, Wendigoon, probably the nicest dude, and then came at him with allegations that he founded the Boogaloo Boys. Wow. And I know he was basing it very loosely on some things that Wendigoon had said, but the call out was so wild. And let's just say, even if he did do that, if he said, whoa, I don't like where this is going and he left, you kind of don't have anything to call him out for anymore. If people are doing something that ain't got nothing to do with you and you was like, this is getting out of hand, but that was a, that was a strong, uh, that was a strong allegation. But looking at that video, it definitely felt like there was some jealousy there. He and Wendigoon are in the same space. Wendigoon is the big name and Wendigoon in his mind has different values than he does. And he sees Wendigoon as a rival when Wendigoon probably just sees himself as Wendigoon. And our guy was very clear that he was struggling for money and was very clear that Wendigoon was rich. And he didn't like that. Is there a possibility that he would like to have the accolades and definitely the money that Wendigoon has? I'm going to say probably. Probably. But let's get to this part and then I'm going to wrap it up. I am not this insane person who, like, it's impossible to get along with. You know, I didn't want to put out, like, an apology video two days afterwards because nobody learns things in two days. That's just reacting. It's not listening to what people say and acting. And there's a big difference there. And like everyone, I'm a work in progress. Okay. All fair points. All fair points. You know, I want to be the best me that I can be. And I'm not saying that to protect my money. I'm not saying that to protect my reputation. I'm saying that because it's true. And if I wanted to protect my money, you know, or my reputation, I would have done this on like the main channel. Not necessarily. This is one of the better moves that you could have made for your money. Although putting this on your main channel would have gotten you money quicker. So I'll give you that. And also the fact that you deleted the original video, which if I were you now, I'm going to today where our guy Shadow Praise here is better than me. 
because if it were me, even if the video was getting that kind of heavy backlash, I would have kept that video up there. Cause if he was worried about money, he sure as hell wouldn't have been worried about it when that video was done. Cause that thing had heat. That thing had legs, baby. Now he may, I got a feeling that he made some money from that video before he took it down. Cause that thing was spicy. It was making some, it was making the rounds. But I'll, I'll take him a little bit on his word at that because he did delete that main channel video. But I really do believe this video should have been on that main channel because I think more people would have seen it because the only great way I even knew about this video was because other people talked about it. Like the, the, some of the people that he talked about actually talked about this video. You're only watching this if you sought this out, you know? Uh, so it is what it is. People can think what they want of me. I will continue to do better. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, I'm sorry for everything, genuinely, where I fucked up, for not having any chill, for just being a kind of an asshole. So I guess that's where I'm going to leave this. So that's it for the apology. After this, he talks more about his channel. It's not really going to be a vlogging channel. He's just going to do uh, like similar content, but on uh, certain, you know, on specific types of movies. He, he talks about it. You can go watch his whole apology. I'll link it in the description. I really do feel that people wanted him to specifically address the people that he talked about in the end, in the end of his video. I think it would have been nice to mention them by name the way he did in the last video. He mentioned these people by name and said things about them. That was something that he should have tackled. He should have definitely said, Hey, I'm sorry to these people and then went on from there. Even if he believed something about them, he has no real way of knowing these things for sure. It's just, he doesn't like what he perceives to be their politics. I think this video was the smart thing to do. I also think it was the right thing to do, but I really would have felt that it would have been stronger had he addressed the people that he actually, uh, some would say tried to cancel in that video. Now, you know, I don't know if people would say that it was a full on him trying to cancel people, but there's a little bit of that energy there. But overall, he does take accountability for things, uh, for the video itself. You know, he takes the L as, as we say on, on YouTube. And uh, he does acknowledge, hey, I'll try to do better. And I'm pretty sure we'll be seeing what he does in his next videos. So other than that, you guys take it easy. Nathan Brandon Masters. Awesome. Don't look back, we're here to stay. A life we knew would come one day. And this is it, the borderline, to where the future leaves us behind. The fire will burn and never die. Looking through the eyes of a brand new life. It's so